camera right here. Well, you know, I'm just, uh, uh, yeah, I'm both great. <laughs> Hi again, guys. We're back with more mysterious recipes with me and her. And today we are going to be tackling a recipe that we've been talking about for a while. The dreaded, the dreaded ice cream log. We're going to be trying to do the white cheddar ice cream log from Treasure in the Royal Tower and um, it might turn out surprisingly good, but we are reserving our judgment until it is all done and we're a little scared for our lives. <laughs> yes, let's get started. Um, first we're going to start our ice cream base. This is going to be a multi-step process. It's going to take either most of the day or we might come back to it tomorrow and finish up our beautiful recipe. Just because there's gonna be a handful of steps to this. First of all, we're gonna start making our ice cream base. So we are we have a small pot and we're gonna go ahead and warm up one and a half cups of milk and one and a half cups of cream until it comes to steaming over medium to medium low or alternately you can use um, three cups of half and half. That's gonna take a few minutes to heat up. So in the meantime, we're going to prep our flavorings to go into the ice cream base. And that would be cheese. This recipe does specifically call it a white cheddar ice cream log. So we are using a block of white cheddar here. We're gonna go ahead and get this grated. Um, so depending on how cheesy you want it, you can use between six to eight ounces. This is an eight ounce block. So we're gonna shred up either about three quarters of it or the whole thing. We also need to get some egg yolks for our ice cream base. So we're gonna take six large eggs and just set the yolks aside to mix in once it's all ready. Our milk and cream mixture has started to steam, so we're gonna take three quarters of a cup of sugar, stir that in, and let that continue until it's fully dissolved. Our sugar's dissolved and our milk mixture is steaming, so now we're gonna take one cup of that and slowly stir it into the egg yolk just to kind of bring them up to temperature without cooking them and then we're going to return that to the pot and cook it with the rest of it. Flavorings aside, this is the base for our ice cream here at this point. Egg, base. sugar, milk, and cream. We're gonna cook this a bit longer until it starts to thicken up. It's starting to thicken up just a little bit. We're gonna give it another minute or two. Well, it has slightly thickened at this point, so we're gonna turn the heat off. And we are going to remove from the heat. Now that we've removed this from the heat, we're gonna stir in one teaspoon of vanilla, and then the cheese that we've shredded. Again, anywhere between six to eight ounces, depending on how cheesy you want it. Cheesy, cheesy. Alright, we have mixed in our vanilla and our shredded cheese, and the cheese is oh, melted. Looking. We're gonna pour the ice cream base through this strainer into a large bowl and make sure that it removes any little bits, any little clumps, and we end up with a nice smooth base. Mm. 
The six ounces might have been a better amount because we're ending up with a little bit of cheese left in the strainer after. We did notice when we were looking up a few different recipes to base this one off of today that they do often, a lot of people do say um, this one pairs well with apple pie. That is not really an ice cream that you're going to eat on its own so much, but if you have like a slice of apple pie and put this on top, that it goes really well together. We don't have any apple pie today, not unless we pick one up later, because I don't think we have the time to make one as well. But just a thing to keep in mind if y'all try this recipe and you want to try pairing it with that. This is our finished flavored strained ice cream base, and now we need to get it to cool. If you have the time, then I would recommend putting this bowl inside a larger bowl full of ice, doing an ice bath to cool it down. We have to go run some errands, we don't have time, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of plastic wrap, press it down onto the surface of the, of the mixture so that it doesn't form like a skin on there. And we're going to pop this in the fridge and just let it stay in there until it gets cold. We yeah. made a cheese baby. So, this don't is pour it out, please. our little stuff. It's covered in plastic right now. It's going to go in the fridge, we're going to get it nice and cold. And we'll come back to you sometime later on today when this is cold to continue with step two. We're back. It's been about two and a half hours. Ideally, if you have the time, let it keep cooling longer than that. We're really, really trying to knock this out today since we've been trying to work on this recipe for a while now and finding back-to-back -back days where we can film doesn't really happen hardly. So anyway, it's been two and a half hours. The mix has cooled down. It's cold-ish now. <laughs> But if you have time, let it keep going overnight until it's just completely cool. Anyway, we've got our ice cream maker out and we're going to go ahead and put the base in there and process it until it starts to set up. The ice cream has mostly set up in that so we now since we are doing a ice cream log we're gonna be a little bit more specific about the next steps we've got a small pan little brownie size pan and we are going to line this with plastic wrap down the sides and then pour the ice cream into this so that once it freezes we can pull it all up in one sheet and roll it up into a log so let's go ahead and line this up We're going to put a layer of plastic wrap over this and then we're going to freeze it in the freezer until it's set up pretty much all the way through. It looks really good to be fair. Yes, it does. It does look good at this point. All right, while we have that ice cream freezing up in the freezer, we are going to just, since we are a little bit hesitant about how much we personally are going to enjoy this, we're going to go ahead and make a sauce for when we serve it. So we're going to make a caramel applesauce. And for that, we are going to use a tart apple. We've got a Granny Smith one here today, but you can use any semi-tart apple. We just want a little bit of something other than sweet. And we're gonna cut that up into small pieces. And 
now that the apple's chopped up, we're gonna put it in a small pot with three tablespoons of butter and cook that down over about medium heat until it softens up. The apples are softened up pretty well, so now we're gonna add a quarter cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of heavy cream to the pot as well, and bring that to a simmer. That's bubbling nicely and it's started to thicken up, so we're gonna go ahead and cut the heat off on that and let it cool off for a bit until the ice cream is ready. The ice cream is mostly set up, so now we're gonna lift the whole thing out using the plastic wrap on the bottom and roll it into a log. We're gonna wrap it back up with a bit more plastic wrap and then put it back in the freezer till it gets hard enough to slice. The ice cream log is still a little bit soft set, but we are running out of time for today, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. Ideally, if you're making this and you're not in a rush, let it finish setting up overnight first. We're gonna go ahead and top that with our apple caramel sauce. This is what, if you're very lock. lucky, you could order and enjoy. All right, folks. time for the moment of truth. Um, as you can tell, we did go a little happy with the apple topping, just a little heavy with that, just, just in, in case. case. <laughs> the apples are good bad. So like the first initial moment when it hit my tongue, my tongue was like, ah, please no. But um, I think the more you eat, the more your tongue adjusts to the flavor. Now I could see this being good on apple pie, like a bunch of the recipes we're recommending you try. Is it something that I would find myself craving on its own? Not for me, you. No, nope, but it's not bad. Yeah, it's better than I thought it might be. If you like egg custard, you'll probably like this. That's kind of what makes me think of. Like, the more I eat, the more my tongue adjusts. I don't love the consistency you get with the cheese. I think if you had this not soft serve, you wouldn't notice the cheese consistency as much if you had it frozen nice and hard. But you do definitely notice the cheese the sort of cheese texture in there with it being like this. Is it a pass or a fail? I think it's a pass in that it's something new to try and if we had went and got an apple pie and had that on hand, a little scoop of this on there. Yeah. Okay. See it sure. Um, I will not be eating the rest of that log by itself, at least not very quickly. It's ice cream. It'll last forever. It's not bad, it's just not to my taste. It's not a very pleasant thing to eat. <laughs> but this was something that's been on our to-do list to try since just about since we started our recipe project. So at least we can say that we've made it and tried it now. I mean, is it a white cheddar ice cream? Yes, we succeeded yes. in creating what we set out to create. However, is it something that we personally will find ourselves craving? No. If, I think somebody could really get yeah. behind this. I just don't. Think I think Joanne would love it. Yeah. But she's from Wisconsin, so. <laughs> Was it a successful experiment? Yes. Is it something we will probably find ourselves making again? 
Probably not unless we're doing a Nancy Drew themed dinner. But if you are doing a Nancy Drew themed dinner and you want to do something that probably your other attendees have not made or tried yet, make an ice cream cheddar lob for dessert. But I think you can kind of tell, but pair it with a pie. We only like it so much. I mean, when's yeah. the last time you've seen where we didn't scarf the entire where thing Where we didn't lick the plate clean, I mean. <laughs> it's not bad, it's just not us. Yeah. So, um, if you want to try something new and you're okay with it not being the most amazing thing you've ever eaten, or you're okay with taking the risk that it might not be, to your taste, the most amazing thing you've ever eaten, go for it. Anyway, that's it for today's recipe. It probably will be another month or so before we upload again, just because the next month is looking to be pretty busy for us. So if you don't see us for a little while, it's okay. We will be back eventually. We just have a bunch of things to get straight first, and we will be back with another Nancy Drew recipe. Comment below if you have any requests, suggestions, ideas. If you have tried white cheddar ice cream before or cheddar ice cream before and you love it, eat it, whatever, let us know. And we'll be back eventually with something eventually. very craveable, and like Bakers and Nash. <laughs> oh, we've already eaten that so many times since we first showed you guys how to do it, so that one definitely recommend if you haven't tried it yet go for it try it yeah now Today. you will not regret it i feel fairly confident in saying that one but until then bye mystery time there's a mystery <laughs> Should I talk in my so voice? professor hotchkiss please tell me about your latest project go fly a kite ah uh, ah uh.